Let's be honest. Do I really have to ask if you've ever heard of the Teutonic Order? For those of you who may not know who they are, they are considered one of the big three of the Knightly Orders, the other two being the Knights Templar as well as the Knights Hospitallers. And these guys are pretty damn badass in their own right. Often known for their contribution during the Prussian Crusade, these guys have a lot more history than just that, and I mean a lot. So much so that this video is just going to focus on the early years of the Order and the first few Grand Masters that they had. So let's dive right into it. Created in 1190 during the Third Crusade at the Siege of Eger, the origins of the Order was fairly humble. Made up of mostly German merchants from Berman and Lebec, their original goal was to provide as much medical aid as they could to the soldiers and civilians during the Crusade. And for the first eight years of the Order's history, that's pretty much all it was. It was mostly just focused on saving lives and helping pilgrims rather than fighting battles and wars. Now with the vast majority of the Order's members being German, their name definitely shows that, with the original name being... The Order of Brothers of the German House of St. Mary of Jerusalem, also known simply as the German Order or simply Teutonic Order, as Teuton was the old word for German used in Latin and Gaelic. So the Teutonic Order literally translates to the German Order. And I am going to be 100% honest with you guys right now. I feel really freaking stupid that it took me this long to realize that. That Teuton was literally just another word for German in Latin. So Teutonic Order just translates to the German Order. Why it took me till just now to realize that, I don't know. Maybe I'm freaking stupid, which I mean, it's no brainer. I am an animated night guy on the internet that talks about shit he likes. So, you know, whatever, I guess. At least I learned. <laughs> so anyway, the Order would continue to focus in on helping the sick and injured until Emperor Henry VI of the Holy Roman Empire would encourage the Order to take more of a military role. However, he would pass away in 1197, right before the Order would build up its military branch. And after his death, and with the encouragement of King Alamark II of Jerusalem, the Order would take on more of its military traits in 1198. The Order would then elect Heinrich Wolf von Bassenheim as their first Grand Master. Believed to have been born to a noble family in Mainz, there's not a whole lot on this guy. Uh, we do know that he was one of the early members to join the Order, and did vote in favor of turning the Order into more of a military role. However, not much else is known about him. After he became Grand Master, Pope Innocent III would confirm the order, making it an official holy order under the papacy. From here, Heinrich would be given the monastery rules from both the Knights Hospitallers as well as the Knights Templars. You see, what he wanted to try and do was do like a mesh between the two orders, to have all the battle prowess of the Knights Templars as well as all the medical knowledge and know-how of the Knights Hospitaller. Basically, he wanted an order that can do both proficiently. And so he would lead the order from 1198 till his death in 1200, where his body would be laid to rest in Acre. Now there's not a whole lot on the next two Grand Masters, so I apologize for that. I just couldn't really find anything on them. So with that said, the second Grand Master of the Order would be Otto von Kirpen, where he would serve from 1200 to 1209. Otto would come from a noble family in Eiffel who lived in the Kirpen Castle. He would join the Third Crusade and would end up being one of the original founding members of the Teutonic Order. And Otto did seem to work on getting the Order more independent, so that way it could act more like that of the Templars and Hospitallers. He would eventually pass away in 1209, and his body would also be laid to rest in Acre. After him comes Heinrich or Hermann Bart, which we don't really know which name it is. Uh, it depends on the translation. It's either Hermann or Heinrich, but we do know his last name was Bart. Regardless, we have even less information on him as he wasn't Grandmaster for very long. He would only ever serve in 1209, and he would later die that same year. And his body would also be laid to rest in Acre. Now comes our main character of our story, and perhaps the most influential person in the entire Teutonic Order, Hermann von Salza. Born from a dynasty of ministerials from the Thirty and Landgraves, it's believed he was born in Dryburg Castle in Lagin Salza during 1165. Herbert would have some prior military service, serving under various German lords, as well as even serving under Emperor Henry VI during the German Crusade of 1197. It's not 100% known when he joined the order, however, we do know that he was elected as Grand Master around 1210. And when he first got into the office, the order wasn't doing too hot, as the order was still primarily operating out of Acre, and at the time they had to compete with much larger, much stronger orders such as the Knights Templar and the Knights Hospitaller. 
This made getting lands for the Order to operate in extremely hard. However, Herman was determined to make his beloved Order grow into something more, dreaming that one day the Order would be so large and so strong that it would be able to supply every man with his own weapons, armor, and gear. And so he would start looking around for opportunities for the Order to gain more renown. And he wouldn't actually have to wait all that long, because King Andrew II of Hungary would request the Order's help. You see, at the time, Hungary was being attacked by the Cumans, a Turkish nomadic people raiding to Hungary and other territories at the time. So Hermann would pack up his boys and send them off to Brezenland in southeast Transylvania in 1225. From there, they would help defend against the Cuman raids and attacks, and oh boy were they effective, and honestly a little too effective. So effective, in fact, that the king and the local noblemen would grow worried of the order's success and would end up kicking the order out of Berzenland in 1225. However, this wouldn't be too much of an issue because Herman had a plan lined up for his boys. You see, in the beginning while all this was going on, Herman was completing a bunch of side quests for himself in particular dealing with those of the Holy Roman Emperor. You see, at the time, and really all the time, the Holy Roman Empire and the papacy never got along. The two were always disagreeing, always at each other's throats, and were always on verge of conflict. And Herman was caught right in the middle of this, as his order being a holy order, he was technically under the command of the church. However, with him also being German and his order being primarily Germans, they were also under the command of the Holy Roman Empire. It also doesn't help the fact that Emperor Frederick II and Herman were extremely close friends. However, because of this close friendship, he would accompany Frederick II on the Fifth Crusade against Damietta in 1219, where he would make somewhat of a name for himself due to his bravery on the battlefield. He would also encourage his friend to undertake the Sixth Crusade, which is actually a pretty funny crusade. However, I won't get into that just yet. Uh, that'll be for another video. I promise I'll cover that, but it is a pretty funny crusade. Uh, he would also encourage Frederick to marry Isabel II. After this, he'd finally make his way back home to Europe, where he would then be involved in the War of the Keys. Now, I also won't go into the War of the Keys too much, because that is also uh, very much deserving of its own video. But the quick summary of it is that the relationship between the HRE and the papacy had finally boiled over and war had broken out in 1228, specifically between Pope Gregory IX and Frederick II. During this, Herman would try his best to act as a mediator between the two, trying all he could to calm the situation down. Eventually, he would succeed in this, ending the war and restoring Frederick II's status from being excommunicated. And it would be after this that Herman finally have his big chance. During this time, pagan tribes from Prussia were attacking and raiding into Polish lands. Upon seeing how Herman and his knights were so effective against the Cumans years prior, Conrad I of Massavia would ask for his order's help. As Conrad only had a handful of knights to help against the pagan threat, that being the Order of Dobrin, whose numbers were so low that they couldn't stop all the pagan raids. So, Conrad would ask Herman to send in the Teutonic Order for help. And Herman would jump on this opportunity, after some negotiations, that is. You see, he didn't want what had happened in Hungary to happen again here. So Herman, Conrad, and Frederick II would go into discussions, and what they agreed upon was that the Teutonic Order was to help protect the people against the pagans. However, they would still remain independent as well as be able to keep all the land that they would conquer. So any land the Order had taken, it was theirs. And Conrad would agree to this at the Treaty of Kursowick, and Frederick II would also help back the Teutonic Order for their efforts. And after getting the Pope's permission, Herman and the Teutonic Order would enter the Prussian Crusade in 1230. And not long after they entered, the Livonian Brotherhood of the Sword would also be merged with them in 1237. Unfortunately for Herman, however, he would pass away in 1239, never being able to see an end to his crusade against the pagans. And after his death, the communication between Frederick II and the papacy completely broke down, as he really was the only one holding things together. Regardless, the crusade would go on and the Teutonic Order would make a name for themselves. However, that would be a video for next time. Sorry to cut it short here, however, I just wanted to try and focus on the Order's early years as well as on Hermann von Selza as he really did build up the Order to what it is today. And by the time of his death, the Order was now growing strong with 2,000 members compared to the tiny number that they were when he had joined. And there is so much history to the Teutonic Order and so many major players in it that I thought it would be a good idea to turn it into a series of videos instead and then at the end put all the videos together and make one big one. So this one here is just going to be part one of however many videos there will be in the series. Not gonna lie, I'm not entirely sure 
on how many episodes this will be, as the Teutonic Order has a very long history with lots of stuff going on in it. However, I will get through it all, I promise. But for now, I just wanted to stay focused on the early years and setting them up. So with that said, I would like to thank you all for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. If there's someone or something you would like for me to cover in a video in the future, let me know down in the comments below. The best way to support this channel is to simply leave a like and subscribe as I much appreciate it. If you'd like to learn more about knightly orders and historical figures, I have more videos on them on my channel below. With that, I'll see you all in the next one and best fall.